Hey y'all, today I'm going to show you a recipe that is similar to an old school chicken and dumpling. Now my mother tells me that my great grandmother made some of the best chicken and dumplings. My great grandmother Lucy, whom I was not able to know because unfortunately she passed away before I was born. But my mom always tells me about how when she was a child, she would go out into the yard and you know everybody was farming back then. She'd get her a chicken for Sunday dinner. Dinner, they chop that head off boil off those feathers and then make some really fresh chicken and dumplings now of course I don't have farm fresh chickens y'all I live in the suburb okay but I'm gonna use this organic chicken today instead of that now I can't tell you that this is her recipe because I don't know what it is but I hope that I'm making her proud and you know she's shining on me from heaven right now so I'm gonna take my chicken legs, and I do think that you should use some bone-in chicken, whether it's chicken legs, a whole chicken, or chicken thighs, because that bone is what is going to make the broth taste better. And that is really going to be the base of this dish because it really is so simple. Into the pot, I'm also gonna add some onions, some garlic, some fresh herbs, carrot, a little bit of chicken seasoning, and a bit of chicken bouillon. Then I am going to mix everything around and I'm going to cover this and let it come to a boil. After it begins to simmer, you're gonna see some foam come to the top. I like to just skim those off. Some people say it's impurities. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really know what it is. Y'all tell me, what is this? Okay, but I don't like to see the foam. I like the broth to be kind of clear, and so I'm just going to remove this. I have also done this recipe in the pressure cooker, and I do find that if you do it in the Instant Pot, you don't tend to get this issue. I'm gonna let this chicken boil slightly uncovered for about 45 minutes. Now, baby, these are the easiest dumplings out here. All right, I have two cups of flour, a little bit of baking flour, and a pinch of salt. It's about a teaspoon of baking powder, and then I'm going in with some butter-flavored Crisco. Now, honey, I'm going to tell you the truth. I did not measure this. <laughs> Baby, I just went in and I got me a big old spoonful. I'm going to say that this is probably about a tablespoon and a half. Then I started off by putting in a fourth of a cup of milk. You could also use buttermilk. Now, I left the other fourth of a cup of milk to the side because I want to slowly add it in just in case I don't need it. When I started, you know, put my back, okay, put my back into mixing this dough, I realized it was a little bit too dry. So I went in with another fourth of a cup of milk. In total, I used one half of a cup of milk. Please let me know in the comments if you are a fan of the rolled out dumplings or the drop biscuit dumplings. I'll tell you that all day, I am a drop biscuit dumpling girl. However, I had someone email me and ask me to show them how I do the rolled out dumplings. So that's why I'm doing that for you all today. All right, now my dough has just come together, and I'm going to treat this like biscuits, okay? We ain't making bread. You just want to get this together until the pieces are not totally falling apart. So you don't need to knead it, honey. Just, just put it together just a little bit. You just want to bring the congregation together, if you hear what I'm saying. Amen. Then I'm going to put down some flour and I'm going to roll this out until it's about a fourth of an inch thick. I try not to handle the dough too much because I don't want it to become tough. Actually, after I put the dough together, there are times where I will just let the dough sit for about 10 minutes covered. And I feel like that makes the dumplings even more tender, um, which you can do as well. Once I have everything rolled out, I am then going to cut a crisscross type pattern. I was looking for like a diamond type shape. Why? I don't know. I just thought it was going to look cute. You can do any shape you want, honey. Okay, you can do squares. You can do rectangles. You honestly can do strips if you like. Um, you just want to make sure that you cut them out and you want them to be at least relatively even so that they're cooking at a very similar rate. Now, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please make sure you give your girl a thumbs up and leave your video request down in the comments because you just might see your request on this screen, baby. All right, now as you can see, I have this little diamond pattern going and at this point, my chicken is tender. Now you can use a colander to drain everything, but I ain't really have a lot going on in this pot. So I just went in with my tongs and I picked everything out. But of course, if you're doing a bigger pot, you know, straining it would probably be the best thing. I'm going to use two tongs to pick off the chicken meat. 
And then I am going to discard the skin as well as the bones. To add a bit more richness, I'm going to go in with about a tablespoon and a half of butter. Okay, baby, you know what would the South be without some butter. And then I'm going to season this to taste with salt and pepper. I also like to put in about a half of a cup of half and half to encourage some creaminess. And I'm also going to season with a bit of onion powder, a little bit of garlic powder, pepper, a bit more chicken bouillon. You really just have to taste it to see where you want it to be. Now, pay close attention to how I'm putting in my dumplings, okay? I'm going to put them in and then I'm going to put them in different spots in the pot. You don't want them to stick and clump up together. You also want to use the back of your spoon to push them around so that you get more space to add more and more dumplings. You don't want them to start, you know, congealing and sticking to each other. That would be bad. Once you have them all added, I'm going to allow this to simmer for about 10 minutes or so. And I also put in a teaspoon of cornstarch as well as a can of cream of chicken just to make the mixture a little bit more like a gravy. That's the way that I like my dumplings. Let it simmer for about five more minutes and baby, you have a delicious pot of chicken and dumplings. Let me know if you guys are going to make it. Do you think I made my grandmother proud? Let me know in the comments. I love you all and God bless.